if you have a bunch of PDF files and you want to have a conversation with them, just like you can have a conversation with ChatGPT about any topic, then this video is for you. I'm going to show you a website which uses the exact same concept and does the exact same work. I'll also show you how to get three credits from OpenAI so that you can experiment with this. And I'll also show you my usage and the cost associated with it. For our application, we're going to be using LangChain, which is a framework for developing applications powered by language models. It allows you to connect your language model APIs to other sources of data. And then it allows the language model to interact with its environment. So in this case, the data sources. You can use this with any model from OpenAI, along with all the recently open sourced models such as Llama, Alpaca, or GPT for all. Before looking at the code on how to do this, let's walk through this architectural diagram to have a better understanding. And don't worry if you're not a coder, I will walk you through each and every line of code and explain what's going on in there. It's going to be pretty easy to follow. So let's get started. So we start with a PDF files. You can have multiple PDF files. For this example, I'm going to be just using one PDF file. Then you simply read that PDF file and extract data from it using Python. Now, say you have 100 or 200 pages in your document. You cannot really feed that into your large language model because it will hit the token limit. So in this case, what we do is we divide it into smaller chunks such that the length of the chunk is smaller than the token size that the model supports. For our example, we are dividing our document into 10 different chunks. Next, we convert each 10 chunks into their corresponding embeddings. An embedding is a vector or a list of floating point numbers. And essentially it works as a compression algorithm. So let's say uh, each text chunk has 1000 characters. But using embeddings, we can use it, reduce it to a much smaller size. Let's say the embedding size is only 3. right? So that will be the compression which is performed here. In this case, we are going to be using OpenAI's text embeddings. And now with the help of embeddings, rather than comparing text directly, you can simply compare embeddings and see which uh, two different texts are closer to each other. Based on these embeddings, we simply create our knowledge base. Now with this new knowledge base, when a user asks a question, we will use OpenAI's embeddings to convert this, this text into uh, embeddings. So it's going to be a list of numbers. And then we'll use a vector database to actually run a query on the knowledge database. So based on the embeddings of the documents that we have stored, we will get results and they will be ranked based off uh, their closeness or relatedness to our uh, query. So we'll get the results here. And then we will use a generative large language model to generate a response and send that back to the user. So I hope this uh, process makes it simpler in order to understand what is going on. Now let's look at the code. Here is a notebook that I put together for this exercise. So first, uh, you actually need to go to the runtime. And in this case, you don't really need a GPU runtime. So the normal CPU runtime is fine, right? Then you need and come here, uh, you will see a connect button. So click on that. If you want to run a cell, you can say this, see this play button with it. So if you click on this, it will run uh, the code cell. Running the first cell will install all the packages that we need. For this specific example, I, I'm using this as a technical report of GPT-4 for all. I have a video on the actual GPT-4 model. So I'm going to put a link to that if you want, are interested in watching. So it's basically a PDF file for their technical report, and we are going to be using this and asking questions from this. Next cell, if you run this, it will load all the packages. Next, we will run this cell where we need the API key. So since we're using OpenAI, uh, we will need the OpenAI API key. Now in order to get your API key, you can go to this link. All right, if you go to the link, you will be asked to create an account I already have the account, so um, I don't need to create one. Then you will see something like this API keys. Click on this, and then uh, you, you won't have any API key, so it will ask you to actually create a new one. So let's say this is the API key, right? You can just copy it, close this. Uh, I am going to delete it uh, afterwards, so don't try to use this specific API key, but I just wanted to show you the process. So 
after that simply paste the API, API key and now let's run this cell since we are using running this in um, on Google Colab and my file is actually in my Google Drive so we were going to connect our Google Drive to the Google Colab so run this it will ask you to uh, for permission to connect your Google Drive say yes clicks and then simply uh, allow it and that's all then you will see this message uh, saying that uh, your Google Drive is mounted okay and this is the base address for your uh, Google Drive okay next um, I have a the technical file in this folder on my Google Drive called data so I simply uh, put in the pathway of that folder right and we are going to read that file so you just run this and it will create this reader object all right so if you run it this is a reader object uh, it has all the uh, information on how to read the contents of my pdf file then we want but we want the raw text right so if you run this uh, cell it will actually uh, go to each page and run the uh, read the text from each page right and we'll simply return the raw text so if I type in raw underscore text these are the content of my uh, PDF file and it didn't really show the whole file because uh, of the space limits but it simply truncates it there okay all right so we have a raw file uh, now so now we need to divide it into different uh, chunks as I showed you in the architectural diagram and we are using a chunk size of 1000 characters so that will ensure that we are not hitting the uh, token size and in this case I'm using an overlap of uh, 200 so that that would mean that we get the first sentence will have the 1000 characters and then the second sentence will start from the 800 character and onward all right so let me show you uh, what I mean so let's say that's it will give us a total of eight chunks right and if I read the first chunk and then uh, sorry okay let me run this that's the text in the first chunk but if we add another chunk to it so let's say uh, text uh, the second chunk now it starts from we collected roughly 1 million uh, prompt responses and there is an overlap so if you see here we collected uh, roughly 1 million uh, prompt responses right so th this is because we define uh, overlap of uh, 200 characters you don't have to do it but uh, in my case it seems to be helping okay next we download embeddings from the OpenAI uh, as I said embeddings is simply a list of numbers a float of one numbers right and you can use this to uh, measure the distance between two different uh, text strings or sentences so here we simply downloaded the embeddings from the OpenAI uh, but now we want to convert or actually find the embeddings of our uh, text chunks so for that we are using uh, this vector database so essentially what's going to happen is it will take the uh, text chunks and finding their corresponding embeddings and that will be stored here in the document uh, search next uh, we are importing uh, question answer chains from uh, Langchain and the corresponding OpenAI uh, object now here you can actually pass on different models that you want for example uh, like by default uh, I'm using this text header uh, 001 model but if you need a more powerful model so you can use those you can I think even use um, the uh, GPT-4 uh, API calls if you have it but just for this simple experiment I'm using this model okay so this will create a chain right and now we are all set to uh, start asking questions so for example here my first query is who are the authors of this article right then from uh, our embeddings we simply do a query right so we'll give, give this text and it will find out uh, which is the closest text in the uh, document and semantically to our query search right and run the chain on it and give us a response so let's wait for it now the response is 
Yanavish Anand, Zach, uh, I don't know how to pronounce the name, but we can actually go to the article and see who are the uh, authors, right? So you can see that's the first author, that's the second author, and then uh, third, fourth, and fifth author. So it was able to actually uh, correctly retrieve that information from the document. Now, the beautiful part is like there is no list of authors, like let's say author one, author two, author three, but even um, from the way the technical report is written, it's able to actually infer that these are uh, the authors. Because if you go down, there are other names of people as well, but it completely ignored those. So that's pretty awesome. Okay, next I'm asking what was the cost of training uh, GPT-4 for, for, uh, for all model, right? And it returned an answer of $100, right? If you go back to the article, uh, so here it says that our release model uh, can be trained about on about eight hours, right? And here's the total cost. Now, the interesting part is there is another dollar figure, and like 500 and then even 800, but it still was able to actually get us the correct for dollar figure because these are the uh, cost of training other models. So it's pretty neat. Okay, so I asked it a couple of other questions. For example, how was the model trained? So the model was trained with LoRa uh, on, uh, it gave us actually the, uh, how many training examples or data set that was used to, that, that's pretty good. Uh, and then, how was the size, what was the size of, uh, actually should be, what was the size of the training data? It changes, although like it still gave us a uh, correct answer. So this many prompt generation pairs were used to uh, in the uh, creation of the data set. Uh, another question, how is this different from the other model? So it kind of gave me a whole description. Uh, it says that it is a non-commercial, it has non-commercial license. It is trained with LoRa, right? Uh, so I think it's not really um, an exact answer because that exact information is not really present in the paper. So let's ask it something that is not in the technical report. Uh, I will say what is Google Bard? Okay, let's see what the response is. And the answer is I don't know because that information is actually not in the technical report. Okay, so it's very powerful. Now let me show you a website uh, that is actually using the same concept uh, to let you query your own uh, PDF documents. This website is called uh, pdfgpt.io and it used to be actually free but now it requires you to give you to give them uh, your API key and then you will be able to uh, query your documents. But anyways, here is how the interface looks like. So. You simply enter, uh, upload your own PDF file, right? And then uh, you can simply start uh, asking the question and it will start giving you responses. So it's very similar to what we did in this tutorial, but they have a pretty nice interface around it and they are using a little bit more powerful model than we, what we had. Now, let me sh also show you uh, the user cost that we had uh, with this tutorial. If you go to your uh, OpenAI's account uh, using the link that I provided, so first, uh, as I said, there are API keys that you can see. Then you can actually go to the usage, right? So they give me a credit of $5. So far, I have used around uh, 50 cents of that, and I have made around 62 requests. So it's, it's a minimal fee. It's not uh, that crazy, uh, but something to be... Uh, careful about. Well, I hope you found this video useful. If you did, uh, don't forget to comment and like the video. It really helps with the algorithm. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.